underrated is a term defined as this, not rated or valued highly enough and having more value than people have given credit for. Now if you're a semi-old fan of the Batman Arkham series then I'm sure you remember all about the Arkham Origins is underrated posts that flooded the internet a couple of years ago, and if you're an even older fan, I'm sure you also know why people were making those posts in the first place. Origins had been extremely hated and overlooked, the black sheep of the franchise, ever since its release. It took some time, but eventually though, fans began doing a complete 180 on the game and everybody started seeing its true value and appreciating Origins for what it was. But if everyone's calling it underrated, then it's actually no longer underrated, right? So which Batman Arkham game truly should be considered the most undervalued, not credited enough, and the most underrated game in the series today as of now? Arkham Knight? Asylum? Maybe, just maybe, even Arkham City? Or does Arkham Origins still reign supreme in this conversation despite fans doing a complete switch up on the game? Well, we're first going to go through every argument for each of the four Batman Arkham games to hold this title, mostly because every Arkham game is underappreciated in its own way. Later, we'll be comparing these arguments and ranking the Arkham games one by one in order of how underrated they actually are, and determining which one should be considered the most underappreciated. So let's find out which Batman Arkham game is really slept on the most. Right after I mention this video's sponsor, Mantis Sleep. Do you struggle to fall asleep at night, waking up feeling groggy and unenergized every morning? Well, I used to as well, until I discovered Manta Sleep. Manta Sleep masks are unlike any other sleep mask on the market. With their adjustable design made with premium materials, they provide insane comfort and 100% blackout for a truly restful night of sleep. Now I received Manta Sleep sound mask and I absolutely love it. Not only does it legitimately feel like my head is getting hugged by a pillow whenever I wear it, but the mask also has razor thin Bluetooth headphones built into the sides so I can listen to relaxing meditation, ASMR, or even some ambience while going to sleep. And oh yeah, the headphones come with easily adjustable speakers and a 20 hour battery life, which is quite literally twice as long as the other sleep masks on the market by the way. Again, I genuinely cannot emphasize this enough, Manta sleep masks are just so high quality and feel like the absolute premium. I was never big on using sleep masks, but Manta sleep might have converted me, I don't know, I've been using it a lot. So don't wait for another night of restless sleep. Visit Manta sleep today, get the world's best sleep mask for yourself, and use my special code KNERD for 10% off your order. Huge thank you to Manta sleep for sponsoring today's video. Now let's find out which Batman Arkham game is actually the most underrated. Starting off with game number one, Batman Arkham City. Now Arkham City is the golden boy of the franchise, the game most people think of when talking about the Arkham series, and almost undisputedly the best superhero video game of all time, so how exactly could it even be considered the most underrated? Well, it actually gets way more hate than you probably think, and that's for one simple reason, the game's storyline. In fact, I've been seeing this go around more and more often lately, people just straight up calling the game's story the absolute worst in the series because it is, quote, not Nothing more than a glorified fetch quest. The argument that people use in defense of this statement is that the main villain, Hugo Strange, felt like he was sidelined for most of the game, there was a lot of unnecessary filler content and villains throughout the main campaign, and of course, the most used one, Batman doesn't really do much other than go here, find that, now go here, still try to find that, throughout the whole Joker's blood plotline in Arkham City. Now, not only do I completely disagree with this, but I also think that these kinds of statements are just stupid and meaningless arguments in the first place. When you dump something down so much, you can make anything, no matter how great it actually is, sound really bad. Spider-Man No Way Home is essentially an artificial plotline made to target nostalgia, Batman Beyond is about an old man who takes a teenager under his wing, and basketball is a sport where you just throw a ball into a hole. Now all of these descriptions are technically not wrong, but do you notice how they also don't do the actual thing justice at all? It's a lazy argument because you can apply that very same argument to literally any piece of media. To call Batman Arkham City's story a glorified fetch quest isn't technically wrong, but it also doesn't take into account all of the details, characters, plot twists, and everything else that makes this game's story so interesting and immersive. It has great writing, pacing, world building, and so much more. That's why it's considered the best superhero video game of all time, but some people just can't see that value and don't give the game's story enough credit for that. So essentially, Arkham City's main storyline has been devalued to its core by a portion of players over the years, hence why the game has at least some sort of argument for being under Rated. Now realistically though, aside from the 1% of people that make those kinds of dumb arguments against the game, there's just no chance the city is actually underrated by the majority of fans. It's the most well received, the highest praised, and yeah, again, the almost undisputed greatest superhero video game of all time. So even if the game's story is criminally underrated by some, it is nowhere near the most underrated Arkham game in the franchise, so let's move on to... 
Game number two, Batman Arkham Knight. Now, unlike City for the most part, Arkham Knight has faced a ton of criticism ever since its release. There was that horrendous PC port, many players claim that there is way too much Batmobile, and of course, let's not forget how so many fans absolutely despise the game's writing. You see, Arkham Knight is in kind of a weird middle ground where you either love it or you hate it, and that's for one simple reason. The game absolutely nails certain aspects while simultaneously dropping the ball in a lot of ways too. Arkham Knight is nowhere near perfect. There are many points throughout the game that are massively criticized, and rightfully so. It deserves some of the criticism, but where the underrated part comes in is that there are not a couple, not a handful, not even some, but just as many times where the game shines brighter than any of the other Arkham games, and I feel like Arkham Knight doesn't get enough respect for those parts in comparison to the overshadowing bad moments. Just for some examples, I'm gonna go through a pros and cons list that I've made for this game, and hopefully you notice that there is definitely a key takeaway here, because I'll certainly try to highlight it as much as I can as we go through this list. So, con for instance, you're in the Batmobile way too much instead of being able to play on foot. I don't mind the Batmobile nearly as much as many others, but even I can admit that it certainly was overused, especially when the game is about Batman, not the Batmobile. However, despite its overuse, the Batmobile's gameplay is heavily underrated and is also a pro. The driving, boosting, drifting, handling, and just overall feel of controlling the Batmobile is legitimately, I would say, pretty close to some of the lower end dedicated racing games. Not only does driving feel great, but so does battle mode. Again, the movement is great here too, and the actual combat and stealth within the Batmobile has definitely grown on me over the years. It was also incorporated into the puzzle solving aspect of Arkham Knight extremely well too, making Riddler's challenges much more complex and intricate with all of the added Batmobile mechanics to keep in mind. So Massive Con, it's really overused, but Massive Pro, it's essentially an added means of traversal with really great handling, control, and overall feel, has a solid gameplay and puzzle system backing it up, and an awesome environment specifically designed to make using the car as fun as possible, something that the other Arkham games had nothing even close to. Like literally, the only thing that even compares to this is the Batwing in Arkham Origins, and that just plays a cutscene. Now here's the key takeaway, can you guess which one is focused on more by the majority of players, the con of the Batmobile being used too much, or the pro of it being a great addition to traversal and gameplay. Obviously, it's the con that gets 99% of the attention, while the pro gets completely overlooked in most cases. Once again, I'm not saying it doesn't deserve the criticism, but this criticism without much praise, especially when it's due, is certainly a recurring theme you'll notice as we look through more examples like this one. Speaking of more examples, another area where Arkham Knight both drops the ball and excels past the other Arkham games simultaneously is the gameplay. Now, throughout the game, there are really just no great boss fights. You fight Jason a handful of times, most of which take place in the Batmobile, which brings us back to our last complaint. There's some other boss fights as well, like Albert King, Riddler, Croc, Deathstroke, and a few more, but they're really not all that memorable and don't make the game any more enjoyable overall. This is in major contrast to the rest of the Arkham series. The other Arkham games all had great, unique, and ingenuitive boss fights through and through, making this yet another really low point in the Arkham franchise set by Arkham Knight. However, I would argue that this is evened out by the absolute absolutely masterful gameplay loop that I honestly think is one of the best of any video game ever. Combat is better than it's ever been in the Arkham series, by far. Stealth is better than it's ever been in the Arkham series, by far. And yep, Traversal is also better than it's ever been in the Arkham series, by far. In Arkham Asylum, you'll often take damage, get hit, or lose your combo to something that's completely out of your control. In Arkham City and Arkham Origins, there's certainly less of that, but it is still there and you'll definitely notice times when you shouldn't have taken damage, but you did because you got unlucky. Well, in Arkham Knight, hand-to-hand -hand fighting has been upgraded so much and has become so responsive to the point where if you take any sort of damage, you really have nothing to blame other than your own mistakes, 99% percent of the time. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a perfect combat system. Predator encounters have also been upgraded to have massive, detailed level designs that are so much bigger than what the other Arkham games offer in terms of stealth. This, along with your arsenal being the most abundant and versatile it's ever been, means that every stealth section is filled with so many tools at your disposal, so many different ways to take out enemies, and so many unique approaches available to every player to take on each fight in their own desired way. And of course, since Batman received an upgrade 
appeared at Arsenal, so did his enemies. They can now do things like track you, conceal themselves from your detective mode vision, revive enemies that you've previously taken out, and do so much more, which overall just creates a level of complexity and sheer creativity to stealth that is practically in its own league, both in terms of the Arkham franchise and the entire superhero video game industry itself. It sounds a little weird to say, but name me one stealth system that enables creativity, ingenuity, and versatility more than Arkham Knight does. And do I even need to bring up why Traversal is better than the rest of the Arkham games? It's so much faster, fluid, more options to choose from such as the Batmobile, a larger area to fly around, and so many added quality of life features like Batman pushing himself left or right off a wall, and being able to control exactly which direction he starts his glide after completing a grapnel boost. So con, this game has easily the worst boss fights in the series, there is no argument there, but it also has the best gameplay system in the franchise by far, and I feel like that definitely makes up for a lack of good bosses. As far as pros and cons go, I want to get into the specifics now and talk about Arkham Knight's side missions next, because while the game does get a fair amount of hate for its side missions, it also has some great ones that tend to get overlooked. Now, Arkham Knight has the most side missions out of any game in the series, and while some were definitely worse than others, the vast majority of them are solid through and through. Except, that's not what people focus on. Everybody talks about how Deathstroke was done dirty with a tank fight, how Hush was sort of thrown away after the buildup in Arkham City, or how Lamb to the Slaughter was an underwhelming one and done. That's fine. All of those deserve criticism, but on the other hand, nobody really talks about how Riddler's side mission was such a vast improvement over the rest of the Arkham games with complex races, a full boss fight, and actually ingenuitive Riddler trophies to collect. Nobody so much as mentions Two-Face's side mission having some of the absolute best stealth sections within the entire Arkham franchise, with Predator rooms that have so many unique interactables, effects like the alarm so you can perform loud takedowns freely, and so many enemies to defeat in a sort of time limit that forces you to play fast. Nobody brings up Pig's perfect murder mystery side mission that had such a disturbing atmosphere with the opera music, the singing, the setup, it was enough to make anyone freak out. See what I mean though? While there were a couple of bad ones, I'm definitely not denying that, the rest of the side missions were all either solid or borderline great, but they tend to get overlooked in comparison to the few bad ones. If we count Season of Infamy as side missions as well, then Arkham Knight's side missions are quite literally leagues better than the rest of the Arkham series, and I don't think the game gets enough credit for that because like I said, everybody loves to focus on the negative. Now, one final pro and con I want to mention is the game's writing, which often gets heavily criticized. Were there bad story moments? Yes, there were. The Arkham Knight, who could have been so much more, was a predictable villain whose reveal was beyond underwhelming to most fans. I mean, Rocksteady even came out and downright stated that this was going to be a brand new, original character, only for him to be, surprise, Jason Todd like everybody had guessed. Then there was the whole Joker's blood infection thing, which was very poorly explained to the audience, at least in a direct way. This led many to not fully understand what was even happening during Arkham Knight's story, and this was especially bad because Arkham Knight brought in a lot of new players to the franchise who had no idea about Titan poisoning or Joker infecting others with his blood, meaning confusion was absolutely through the roof. Even now, almost a decade later, we've literally resorted to fan theories to try and fill in these plot holes that were never fully explained. Now, while there were bad aspects like the ones I just mentioned, there were also some great aspects too that oftentimes, what do you know, get overlooked in comparison to the negatives. Most people don't like Joker returning for this game, so they complain about that without ever praising the way he was used, which was ingenious. The concept of Joker just sort of being there most of the time throughout the story, lingering in Batman's head, all the way to him grasping for control of Bruce's mind in these intense sequences of struggle. It just heightens the overall emphasis this game has on elements of fear, control, and powerlessness in such a unique way. I mean, just the whole dynamic between Batman and Joker was so well executed, especially the little details like Joker slowly getting healthier and healthier every time Batman is exposed to fear toxin, showing how he's getting closer and closer to taking over Bruce's mind. Now, I've been talking a lot about the good aspects of Arkham Knight getting overlooked, but it's the subtle form of visual storytelling moments like this that I think get overlooked the absolute most. Things that don't need words, they don't need to be brought to direct attention, they don't need to be anything more than subtle hints in order to still convey a powerful message to the audience. These subtle hints were used a lot within Arkham Knight's storytelling, and I honestly prefer this method of storytelling, but the downside is that since these small details aren't very direct, a lot of players simply don't pick up on them at first. Just some examples of visual storytelling that I can think of off the top of my head right now are the demon bat during the end scene that subtly implies Batman's use of fear toxin now, Joker slightly pushing the gun towards Barbara before she uses it on herself, enabling keen players to pick up 
pick up on the fact that if the Joker in Batman's mind is somehow able to physically interact, then this whole sequence is not real. Or even how all of the Joker infected represent one key characteristic of the original Joker. Then there's possibly the biggest example of them all, the end of the main story. There is so much symbolism and complexity within this final scene that I'm sure 99.9% .9 of players missed completely, I kid you not. Hold up, future Kanard here, I was about to break down this entire scene for you, but by the time I had already written two full pages and felt like I'd barely scratched the surface, yeah, I think I'm just gonna make a somewhat dedicated video to that instead, so just know that the writing behind the scene is insane work and goes so far beyond the surface level that it's crazy. Anyways, back to the video. So as it stands, there are some characters that weren't written the best in Arkham Knight, but the entire writing and story overall should not be as heavily criticized as it is in my opinion. For every bad part of the story, there's also an ingenious writing moment that just makes you go, wow, that was really clever. Okay, that was a lot of pros and cons, and I'm sure some of you might think I'm just rambling at this point, so the bottom line is this. Sure. Batman Arkham Knight has the lowest of lows in the Arkham series, that I don't think is up for debate, but it also has the highest of highs within the franchise as well, and it doesn't get enough recognition for that. You think anybody talks about the complex storytelling like the writing behind this final scene, filled with so much meaning, symbolism, and depth? No, it goes completely unnoticed because everyone would rather focus on things like the Arkham Knight's poor reveal instead. You think anybody cares that Arkham Knight had arguably the greatest side missions overall in the series? No, they would much rather direct their attention onto the bad ones like Deathstroke and Hush. You think anybody mentions how great the Batmobile's handling, control, and traversal is? Nope. Everyone just wants to talk about how overused it is throughout the game. That's my point. There are so many players that choose to focus on all of the negative aspects within Arkham Knight, and that's fine, but they also simultaneously downplay or straight up ignore the great parts, leading to the game not being praised enough, getting too much hate, and possibly being perceived as underrated. You may agree or disagree, but that's at least the argument, so let's move on to the next game. Game number three, Batman Arkham Asylum. The game that started it all, revolutionizing the superhero video game genre all the way back in 2009. But that very strength of being the first of its kind, starting this revolution in the entire Arkham franchise as well, is often perceived as a weakness instead when comparing it to the other Arkham games. You see, in this day of the modern video game industry, Arkham Asylum's age is starting to show. Back in 2009, the gameplay was obviously, like I said, revolutionary, but the game just doesn't hold up to today's standards nearly as well as the rest of the Batman Arkham series, and it tends to get a ton of criticism for that and is often overlooked by many who want to play something that's more up to date. Heck, I recently went back and played through Arkham Asylum for an extreme challenge run where I had to avoid taking damage pretty much at all costs, and while actively trying to not get hit as much as humanly possible, I noticed something that had never really occurred to me on a serious level before. Arkham Asylum's combat is so, so janky. You'll often lose your combo, get hit with an attack, have Batman do something that you definitely didn't tell him to do, take out multiple enemies with one punch since area effect was a thing for some reason messing you up, and so much more that's all completely out of your control. Now, in terms of of age, Predator is equally outdated as combat. Stealth is very basic, difficult to maneuver control-wise, and only has so many options available within your lackluster arsenal. Even the signature hidden mechanics aren't present here. I'm sure if you've seen my videos on those, you've probably noticed that an Arkham Asylum appearance on those lists is very, very rare, and that's not because I don't like the game, it's because there's no hidden mechanics to talk about since the gameplay system is so much more basic. I can sit here and try to explain it to you all day, but if I were to put a controller in your hand right now and have you play Arkham Asylum, you definitely notice its age and lack of fluidity. Wait, we're not here to keep bad-mouthing Batman Arkham Asylum though, we're here to argue why it should be considered underrated. Well, I'm getting to that, because throughout complaining, I've actually been setting up my main point this entire time, because unlike everybody else it seems, I don't see the game being outdated as a major problem. Take Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League for example, since I'm sure you're all very familiar with it already. The game has extremely fluid traversal and movement, solid gameplay mechanics as far as gunplay and things like that, good graphics, and offers everything else on the more modern side. But does that make it better than older games from about a decade ago like Skyrim, GTA V, or even Batman Arkham Asylum? No, it obviously doesn't, because modernization isn't the sole factor of whether a game is good or not. It comes down to the experience while playing. And boy, does Arkham Asylum nail that. From the intense atmosphere that leaves you with a feeling of actually being trapped within an overrun Arkham Asylum, to the ingenious world and level design like Killer Croc's lair and Scarecrow's boss fights where you have that sense of being hunted, all the way to the dark and creepy music, aesthetic, and art direction specifically designed to make you feel- <laughs> 
see what I mean? It all works perfectly to create one of, if not the greatest, most authentic Batman experiences to be had. This aspect of the game used to be praised immensely, but current day, it unfortunately gets more and more overlooked now by many. You know, someone who takes one glance at the game and says that it's old, outdated, and obsolete. Or maybe it's a returning player back for a second playthrough where they can't focus on anything but the lesser gameplay after playing the other Arkham games. Or maybe it's even someone who's played through the game so much that the intense atmosphere no longer has that same impact on them. Regardless of the reason, the best part about this game without a doubt gets very little recognition now when it should be highly praised. Batman Arkham Asylum doesn't have the greatest story the best gameplay system, or upgraded graphics in comparison to the rest of the Batman Arkham series, but it does offer the most immersive Batman experience out of all the games. Arkham Asylum is more than just a video game. It's an entire world, a work of art, an experience that you can never truly replicate, and for that reason alone, the game will forever be a timeless classic no matter how far gameplay systems advance, graphics improve, and animations are enhanced. That's why, at least I think, Arkham Asylum is extremely underrated. Finally, game number four, Batman Arkham Origins. All right, we've arrived at the last Arkham game on this list, and also the very game that's been holding the most underrated title for so long. The reason for that is Arkham Origins was the black sheep of the franchise, the reject, the outcast, the distant cousin that nobody cared for. I mean, upon release, the sheer amount of not just pure hate, but also complete disregard that this game got was kind of insane. People saw Arkham Origins as an extremely rushed and incomplete game because of the condition it was in at launch. It had numerous glitches, a lot of them literally being game-breaking, was hindered by performance issues, and was just overall a buggy mess, and still is pretty buggy today, I'm not gonna lie. They also criticized the game's lack of innovation because WB Montreal pretty much just copy-pasted Arkham City code and reskinned that game. Don't believe me? You can still find leftover Arkham City code within Arkham Origins, the city skins fit in perfectly as if they're literally the same game, and all of the glitches and hidden mechanics that aren't related to specific gadgets pretty much always work in both Arkham City and Arkham Origins, which would normally not happen. It was literally so bad that a lot of fans decided it wasn't even connected to the other Batman Arkham games in their own headcanon. Well, I'm here to tell you that Arkham Origins is a lot more than just an overlooked city clone, but even after the game has gotten it's praised and finally is respected amongst the community now, it still hasn't fully escaped this concept of being a rushed copycat, nor has it gained much popularity in comparison to the other Batman Arkham games. I mean, this is a game that has arguably the best story told in the entire Arkham franchise. Exploring an earlier, corrupted Gotham, seeing a younger Batman still barely into his career evolve as a character, struggle with his motivations and the consequences of vigilantism, establish deep relationships both good and bad, and overall just the sheer amount of a emotional depth that this game's main campaign has within it is second to none in the Batman Arkham series. The game also has an amazing atmosphere. Set on Christmas Eve and later Christmas Day, Arkham Origins perfectly captures that with the snowy aesthetic, the weather effects, the holiday decorations. It just gives off such a distinct feeling that makes you want to come back and play it every winter. Now, while the majority of the original Arkham voice cast did not return for Arkham Origins, the new cast was beyond exceptional. Roger Craig Smith portrayed a younger, angrier, vengeful Batman perfectly Troy Baker absolutely nailed his role as the Joker, and everybody else did a great job too. And of course, let's not forget about the boss fights here, because Arkham Origins bosses are the most memorable in the series overall. Deathstroke, one of the best back and forth hand to hand boss fights ever crafted. Firefly, with his entire cinematic sequence play out on the bridge. Bane, who feels so menacing and powerful at first, only to become even more terrifying in his final fight. An Electrocutioner? I mean, this is an absolutely stacked list. All of these amazing qualities and more, some of which literally outshine the rest of the Arkham series, yet Arkham Origins remains the least played Batman Arkham game by far. Nobody talks about it nearly as much as the other Arkham games get talked about. Anytime there's a remaster, update, or anything else on the business side of things like the recent Switch release, the rest of the Arkham series gets all the love while Arkham Origins is always sidelined and forgotten about. I've even seen multiple posts online about a new player becoming a fan of the Batman Arkham franchise, only to later discover that there's a fourth game Batman Batman Arkham Origins. They literally played through Rock City's trilogy and hadn't even known that this game existed that whole time. You see, despite fans doing a 180 on it, Arkham Origins somehow still constantly gets shunned and overlooked in almost every way possible. It may not be as underappreciated as it once was, but it still is definitely underrated. 
Alright, so that's the argument for every Batman Arkham game to be considered underrated, as well as possibly the most underrated game within the Arkham franchise. So now the fun part begins, ranking every game based on how underappreciated they actually are, in order of least underrated to most underrated. So first off, we've got Batman Arkham City. It's an absolutely peak game with tons of amazing qualities, but the problem this game has within this argument is that, unlike the other Arkham games for the most part, those amazing qualities are constantly praised without much hate to go along with. With it. Plus, for the almost undisputed greatest superhero video game of all time to be not just considered underrated, but also the most underrated game in an entire franchise, yeah, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter how many people complain about Arkham City's fetch quest storyline, the game is nowhere near the most underrated, so I can't put it anywhere else but last place. Next up, Batman Arkham Knight. Now, if you remember back to the argument I made in favor of this game being the most underrated, it's because the game drops the ball in a lot of ways throughout the game, but for as many weak points as it has, it it also excels so far beyond the other Arkham games just as many times and the game doesn't get enough credit for that. That's exactly why this game is so hard to determine if it's underrated or not though. Does it receive a lot of criticism? Sure, but the criticism is valid and justified. But again, it also has insane peaks like the gameplay, side missions, and open world being leagues ahead of the other Arkham games which in theory should counteract those negatives, right? Then again, should you really have to nitpick through a game's highs and lows or should it just be a good experience through and through? So since fan perspective is obviously very convoluted and just not a great method here for judging how underrated Arkham Knight actually is, let's take a look at a different perspective, shall we? Batman Arkham Knight has by far the most players of any Arkham game as of current day. It's also the only Arkham game to receive updates nearly a decade later, like we literally got the Battinson suit officially added a couple of months ago, which is crazy. Even a lot of new players just now getting into the franchise skip over the rest of the Arkham games to play Knight first. Despite being the final game, it's still many people's first step into the Arkhamverse. See what I mean? Arkham Knight gets a ton of criticism from its biggest haters, but it's a game that's loved, enjoyed, and appreciated by the majority of fans. I do still think that Arkham Knight is underrated for the sole fact that people tend to focus on the bad and not give the good aspects enough credit, but the next two games are simply more underappreciated overall, so Knight is getting put one spot above Arkham City. And that leaves us with Batman Arkham Asylum and Batman Arkham Origins. What do you know, the immensely overlooked game that is eclipsed by later entries into the series or the other immensely overlooked game that doesn't get as much recognition because it wasn't developed by Rocksteady. Both games have an extremely valid argument to hold this title of most underrated Batman Arkham game. Arkham Asylum's entire immersive experience gets undervalued because of its outdated gameplay, while Arkham Origins is often left out of the conversation and shown no love when it comes to remasters or things like porting the Arkham games to the Switch. So which way are we going to lean for who is the most underrated Arkham game as of current day? Well, some of you might think that this is a cop out answer, but the way I see it, they're both the most underrated game of the Batman Arkham franchise depending on which angle you're looking at it. Arkham Origins is definitely the most underrated if we're looking at the business side of things like remasters, updates, and lack of promoting the game to players. Like I said, Origins is always left out of things like this, while Asylum is practically never left out. On the other hand, Arkham Asylum is the most underrated in terms of overall fan perspective. People love Arkham Origins now, and it's only continued to get more and more praise from fans as time goes on, but Arkham Asylum has kind of been pushed aside and forgotten about for the most part simply because the gameplay has become outdated in the modern gaming world. But we need a definitive list and not a cop-out answer though, so since I think fan perspective is slightly more important in this conversation because the business side of things don't have much to do with the contents within the game itself, I'm giving the edge to Batman Arkham Asylum as the most underrated Batman Arkham game in the franchise. And there's our list. But wait, moral of the story though, every Arkham game is under appreciated in its own way, and there's an argument for each of these games to be perceived as underrated. Arkham City gets way too much hate for its story and writing. Arkham Knight deserves to have all of its amazing aspects acknowledged and praised just as much as the not so great aspects get hated on. Arkham Asylum is so much more than just the original, outdated game of the series, and Arkham Origins shouldn't be so overlooked and disregarded in anything involving the Arkham franchise as a whole. I recently asked all of you guys the same question on the channel, and as proven by that poll, the majority answer is that Arkham Origins is the most underrated Arkham game by far, but just because you see more value in Arkham Knight and don't think it gets nearly as much appreciation as it should in comparison to Origins, that doesn't make you wrong. So enjoy whatever you find the most value in regardless of how others rate it, and just because everyone else doesn't appreciate a value aspect or something of worth as much as you do, that doesn't make it any less impactful or special. With all of that said, this is objectively the correct order. If you have them ranked in any other way, you're flat out incorrect and we can't be friends.